welcome to the family life chat this is a special 10 year anniversary edition by the Adenis, and we thought to share a bit of our lives and that of our friends um in the area of marriage we've had 10 amazing years of marriage am i right okay you don't look like you're convinced that <laughs> i've enjoyed you know being married you know to this wonderful woman here and so we want to talk you know all things marriage and we have here with us our wonderful friends dr dami and Oyi Adeyemi Lemans. <laughs> welcome, welcome to the show. Thank you, Thank you very so much. It's a privilege. Yeah, we yeah. Thank you. We're delighted to yes. have you. Oh. <laughs> I must say, I admire you guys. Um, there's something about the bond between husbands and wives. Um, and so based on the background, the training that I have, when I see couples relate within about five minutes, I can already tell, you know, the way things are it's just part of you know the training and a bit of perception mm -hmm. and you guys share a strong bond um i know that you are you know in the professional counseling space but i know that what you share you know is not just because you know you're professional yeah. counselors it's yeah. because you understand and you're authentic yeah, about your marriage so let's start this way can you tell us how you met <laughs> and what your dating experience was like Maybe first. Maybe first, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, our version is the most valuable. It's different for you too. <laughs> kind of, yeah. So I sh it's we're not, valid. We're not the only ones. <laughs> we started dating at different times to each other. Yeah. <laughs> I was on my own for a while. I thought we were in a relationship. We we're both in the relationship, but she now joined me after that. So I can just imagine. Okay, so yeah. I, I actually um, heard about it first from a roommate. Okay. There was this. Um, Heart of Worship concert. Yeah. yeah. And then he was going to, and then my roommate was, we were three from the room going, and then she was like, after the service, she needs to go and see Emilia Vice. She'll see Emilia Vice. Like, she's, she has a huge crush on him, and then she's this, 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 this. Amazing. And then I'm like, who is this person? Me and my <laughs> other roommates are like, what's wrong with her? So after the service, she said we should wait for her, and then she went to meet him. And I was just like, this busy wearing white chain, <laughs> white trouser, white shoes. Remember that you yeah, ah, with white ah, <laughs> like, With white shoes. Yeah. 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 So How did you know? How did you know? I was like, where is this girl? So we just looked and laughed, and then I forgot about it. And then there was another time, my church, our home church, they were, we were having a health, in, like an outreach, mm -hmm. and then he was invited to speak. And then I heard him speak like the first time. And then we came back to Luz, and then I was going to chapel, and I stopped, and I saw him, my friends and I. And then I said, Oh, um, Grafton, sir, thank you very much for blessing us today. And that was it. That was like how I met him. Mm -hmm. And then his own version is. <laughs> no, but, but actually, <laughs> you, you have to talk about the timelines. Okay. Because this time you're talking about was almost three years before we started talking, or two years before we started talking. Was it? At all, yeah. It was, I, I remember I came back from service around that time when I just finished house job or something, around 2012 okay. or 2011. Like yeah, 2011. Okay. So between 2011, that greeting was just randomly greeted another Random. person. So let me take my version now. So yeah, was, yes, let's have your version. Right, right. <laughs> um, so that day I went to minister in the church. I think my family would be to church at Lekki and all that. And um, I remember very well, I just saw like, Four young ladies from MFM, they were walking on the street of Luth. I just came back from the from, from the administration. I came to read in cold room. So I was walking, then they were coming, so I saw them. And then she greeted me as part of them. And that's just normal, like normal greeting. And that was it, actually. There was no attraction, no. In fact, it's the other way around. Like she was the one that was like the, there's the word oddest of them. Like she was very odd. And why she was odd? Because she had a low cut. And then her hair was very interesting. <laughs> My hair is not black. Her hair is not black. Her hair is not black. Like, so we were like, who is this person with pink hair? Like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> that was actually interesting. And we were coming from MFM. Yeah, yeah. Even mm -hmm. with my natural hair color. That was my natural oh, hair. Interesting, yeah. Like, call, it looks like it's dirty. But that's how my hair is. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so I was like, who is this person? And that was it, actually. And then the next time I saw her, she was driving one big bus like that, big fellowship bus. She was I driving mean, a fellowship bus. Yeah, yeah. she yeah. was so driving a fellowship bus. And I'm like, and bring some memories. He's driving fellowship boss and and she wasn't really even this elegant <laughs> thing. She was yeah, like she was in normal look. she had a student look. I was like, who's this person with glasses always driving fellowship boss and all that? That was the second time. And after that time I never really saw her lose and all that. So um then come this very wonderful day, I was reading at Lutz, same way, but this was in twenty thirteen. 
early 2013, I was looking at blues and then I was preparing for my SCCA exams then. Mm -hmm. So somebody just walked in, came to see Pastor Debo Adewale. I don't know if he name it was Pastor Wemme from Anton Point. It was MGCF Pastor Wemme. It was MGCF pastor. pastor too. So he was a pastor and so she just came to do his umbrella joint. You know, you just come, package things. Yeah. Mm -hmm. She came in, two of our other friends came in. So they greeted Pastor Debo, greeted everybody that they could greet there. So they all left. I said she was the last person to leave. So she slammed the door's cold room. <laughs> And then I was like, who is this person that slammed the door? And he said, like, be cultured. <laughs> I didn't know the door. She didn't, know, she didn't actually know the door was going to slam. So she came back, actually, and apologized to everybody. Wow. Oh, wow. That she's really sorry she slammed the door. And that was when I said, like, Ooh, who is this person? So. Immediately that happened, I mean, I don't want to sound spooky, but immediately that happened, something actually resonated in my spirit, like, mm. pay attention to this person. So, I mean, it happened and I just left, but at least I recognized the fact that it's uh, Olokundi, there's Pastor Deboy, I can ask, who is this person, that kind of stuff. So, um, subsequent days after that, it just kept coming to my mind that I should know her, I should meet her, I should know her, like, no, and I just came out from a very terrible relationship Aww. that I promised myself two years. God did not tell me, I told myself, like, two years, me and God, I'm not in any relationship Aww. again. Like, I just want to focus on ministry and career and just be very limited. So that was around, like, a year plus into my two-year break. Mm -hmm. And then God now started saying, it's time, I'm like, it's two years now. Like, it's not two years, like, what's going on? I had a break around 2012, so it was supposed to be 2013. 2014. By mid 2013, it became stronger, like I should actually get to know her. So, what I did first of all was to ask around. So, I went to a pastor, that's Pastor Bebo, I asked about her, like, who is she? Um, Stephen Herbert, is she? If he watches this video, kudos <laughs> to you. Um, Osai. Um, Osai's friend, what's the other Osai's friend's name? Um, Bishop, that was called Bishop. Dark and so. So they, I sat down with them in their room then, their house job room then, and I asked them, like, who is this person? So they gave me a breakdown. Ah, drive solution boss, very committed. She's a good girl. <laughs> These are like, okay. And then, because I didn't want to just stop there, I went as far as looking for her best friend. Uh -huh. um, my name was Sami. Um, I reached out to Sami. In fact, I used to come to Sami a lot then. People used to think I'm toasting Sami. Uh -huh. So, and then, I mean, Sami knew what I came for, so she uh -huh. was very clear. So she gave me a breakdown, low down, um, or even that, ah, she's a good girl, she's this, she's that. I'm like, see, I'm interested, I'm not here to play. Mm -hmm. to my, uh, like, now, that's, between, that's, that's between, between that time when I first first saw her and when I knew I was going to marry her, I jumped to that stage, is the time when I had to be convinced. Because number one, she was in 200 level, going to 300 level in physiotherapy, was like, ah, that's a long, that's the gap is very wide and all that. In fact, people that were in my church then, that my pastors were saying, I talked to this girl, uh -huh. they were in final year, or they were already doing house job. And then somebody in 200 level, God is saying, that's where it is. I'm like, no, God, it can't be. Like, it's impossible. Uh -huh. Like, you don't, I, this is like the second relationship in Medi Lab that uh -huh. I don't want it to go south, that I don't even want that kind of publicity anymore. It was a mess at least then. Mess in a sense. Yeah. In a sense, ah, she didn't know God told you. Why, why didn't it do work? That kind of stuff. You know, this, this, this God told you thing. Yeah, I think we get there. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll get there, but I, I just said, uh, you know, based on the things you've said so far, some yeah. things have jumped out to me. You know what jumped out to me? The first thing that jumped out to me is the fact that the first time you saw him, we were wondering, who is this guy wearing all white? <laughs> and then the first time you yeah, saw him, you were like, you know, like, all yeah. you know, put off and everything. And then what opened your heart? was the incident at the cold room yeah. when she came and yeah. you know that character and i think a it's character. important to you know i like that yeah. and for those that are watching um whether it's a guy or a lady you know what you should look out for because we're going to get to that part yeah. um actually the next question is about the fact that you know how do you really make you know choices around married partners yeah. um, in a world where the frame of reference has changed yeah. everybody has social access media, to social media, media and then yeah. people have standards we're just just saying about you know some lady that posted something about <laughs> a guy that was toasting her and yeah. that cooked food for her and then you know he could shame them because he cooked food that yeah. you know wasn't up to standard and so what jumps out to me is the fact that you know the people that still look out for character mm -hmm. And that the thing that really attracted you, the first thing that attracted you was the attitude. Yeah. The attitude to say, I'm really sorry, you know, yeah, to... It was, yeah, it was actually very down to that day. I, I was actually... He was moved. I was moved. <laughs> <laughs> I 
like an average medical student won't be that humble to come back and say anything. Yeah, he like said that. that day people had slammed the door. People had slammed the door and left. So yeah, exactly. People had slammed and left and all that. Yeah. yeah so let me just conclude that yeah. story. Yeah. So um, I had to make a decision that okay, yeah, if God is leading me here, yeah, I need to be sure there were other shit I would have put us. So they were like one or two shoulda woulda put us. Then so I just shoulda woulda put us means. <laughs> I should have married this person, I could have married this person, I would have married this person, but it didn't happen. Yeah. Because many other things actually, you get, so they were like two in church then, so what I did was I just went to camp. And I locked myself up in the room there, mm. and I said, God, this is my life. Or you okay? So something <laughs> that must not go wrong. Mm. So really, I spent seven days in camp, no water, no food, nothing, wow. just me and God. Guess what? First day I got to camp, and I said in Jesus' name, God said, I've told you your wife. <laughs> 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 no, I, as yourself. much as I don't like saying this, like yes. I don't want to make it sound like, oh, it is God that told me it's my wife. We're well, still going to talk about that maybe in, in the course of choosing life, but yeah. where there's a God part and there is your heart yeah. and there is to play. God can tell anybody to marry anybody, but character mm. and strong wisdom. A strong wisdom and, and value systems is what okay. was going to keep the relationship. So um, I got there that day, I prayed, it was very clear from day one, but I still stayed seven days because I wanted to just be sure. After a while, God just changed it for me, like, see, guy, yeah, I've told you exactly where it is. He started telling me things that are not even related to my mind, yeah. Yeah. Things very, very different. Like, I remember that night, when I, that morning when I was leaving camp on Sunday morning, God told me, Shady, you, you came here and you collected power, but you can't be collecting power for anything. So he gave me some words for okay. the ministry and all that. And even gave me something that was going to happen. Like a plane crash was going to happen that Sunday. And actually a plane crash actually happened. Oh, wow. So I knew this is God talking. So it was very real. And how to not talk to her was another thing because, I mean, I had to just summon up courage and be able to talk to her because I mean the distance was kind of wide and it was very difficult. But Pastor Femi Lale saw us one day and said, how did you two meet? Like how did mm. your paths cross? Like it's very very difficult for you to see someone who has already finished med school mm. now come and meet somebody who's in 200 level and mm. say so you want to marry the person like something must be in it and we found out what it's in it right now. So, mm. we that. so that's how we met actually and then I went to meet a pastor. Before I talked to her at all, I met a pastor's I went to the youth, youth church proper, I met all the pastors, told them my intent. So it was like the good boy kind of stuff that mm -hmm. I had to do. So I made sure I did my assignment well, found out who she really was. Um, she had a heart of service, she's very, very kind. Um, her mom actually also had the same attributes. I could hear everything that we so it was very new to the small place. Yeah. So that's how we met. So that's that. That was an amazing, you know, version of the story. So I, I want to come to you, Oyi, um, and the question is still on the choice of, you know, my partners. Now, one of the things that struck me about, you know, um, um, Dr. Dami's approach or his version is the fact that he was interested in knowing what kind of lady, you know, is this person. And he went to do a wadi at exactly. like different locations. Yeah, Fact checking, <laughs> investigation. Yeah. 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 Maybe when he knew before me. Oh wow! <laughs> and so I, I feel that, and that's you know that also says something about your character because you cannot do things you've done to people in the past. Mm -hmm. If you've done something terrible to someone, spoken something unkind, mm -hmm. or swindled someone in the past, mm -hmm. and then it, it came, come it will have come. Yeah, so all those things add up. You know your character, attitude, and all of that. It has a way of adding up and ultimately leading to the reward of being the one or yeah, being chosen. Right. But I want to you know hear your perspective. Um, for a lady that wants to choose, make a choice now because of social media and you know so many flashes things you see, you know, back in the day, if you are from a humble background, you know, you are not in the same space as you know somebody that is well to do. But now you just go on social media and you can see, you know, all of that. How do you make that choice? What is important really for a lady that is looking for a life partner? It's very good you asked that question because uh -huh. I think he was from a very, even though he was a doctor, he was a humble background. He was, Claire, very, Claire like, was, I mean, background. was not from, I didn't grow up rich, but I grew up in a little I mean, where, okay, we middle class, we were middle class. Yeah, we could do what we wanted, we lived like a good life. And then he 
came from like from you my have humble to... background. Say it. <laughs> <laughs> it like school fees was hard, like how to pay, yeah. how to dress up. So it was different. And then I, I also had someone who also was interested in marrying me, who came from a who very well known middle class. <laughs> very class. Well <laughs> background, I mean mm. in Lagos and a number of people like that, but I, because I came from a broken home, it was just my mom, mm. and I had made up my mind from a very early age. Like I think I grew faster than than my mates and than my age. I made up my mind. Yes. First of all, it was Absolutely. I'm not interested in marriage. That was my like your mm. default mode. My default mode was I'm not interested in marriage. You know, there's a way bad news, not bad news, but when your story is not good, people that don't have good stories also come around you. Mm. So everything I had heard growing up about marriage wasn't good. People that would come to my mom, or people that would come and complain about their spouses being like her own, you know, mm. it was just, I'm like, I'm not interested in this mm-hmm. kind of life. Mm-hmm. And then I met God, I gave my life to Christ in 2010. Mm. And one of the first things God began dealing with me, first when I first started hearing his voice was about marriage mm. and how that marriage is his intention and marriage is actually good i didn't have any like real models around me people that were with their fathers and mothers didn't really have like the marriage 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 i desired it was just a good father a good mother all around it wasn't Mm. husband and wife so i wasn't interested so god began like breaking telling me first thing he said to me was do you know that love is enough Mm. and i'm like love kid like like first thing i'm telling me growing up is don't love a man, don't love the thing, don't fall in love, don't fall in love, don't fall in love is the, you know, so it was like, I first of all struggled with that and then God began giving me scriptures and words and stories and, and then I accepted that and then the next one was, if you love a man, there's no shame in letting him know you love him. There was nobody at this time, like, it's not like I was in a relationship or planning for a relationship, I mean I was still very young, but I, so it was like God was dealing with me. So He was teaching you to be vulnerable. To be mm. vulnerable. To and be that's that's it. Yeah, and that's a bit difficult if you're from a background yes. where you know your mom has been burnt. Like I was a yeah. hard guy. Mm. <laughs> Are you serious? <laughs> very, very, very oh, serious. Wow. Like okay. I'm the hard guy. I don't like, love like falling in love was like, <laughs> <laughs> like, like, like. <laughs> so God began teaching me all those things, and then I entered a pact with God that I wasn't going to say yes to any man or anyone or be in any relationship until i was sure god was in it and so god began teaching me and telling me the values of what actually makes a man a good man to be to be married to yeah. or to be with. Yeah. And so it wasn't money or like or even like good standing it wasn't anything it was kindness somebody that loves god somebody that cares for god like that that's that fears God, that cares for you, and that cares for people, mm. that gives. So it was my own, like how I used to see things was very different from what people around me were, were seeing mm. as, as values. Or, mm. Oh, this person is this person is this. In fact, it was a turn off that he was very popular. Mm. Because in my mind, I'm like, I don't want somebody that everyone, like, because everybody's going after him. Everybody's yeah. going after him. It should not, not that people shouldn't go after him, but that shouldn't be the reason yeah. why, why I'm there. So it was, I had to, you know, pray. And I've been praying about this person, this other person, before he even came along. This person had been, like, asking, they, and I was they like, They laughed at me, say. So. Oh, wow. <laughs> they I, just, they just my mouth and laughed. I, I, <laughs> the only reason I had not said yes to him was because. God that I just had it, like started having a real relationship with was silent on that matter. Mm. And then this is, no, God is saying nothing. So if God is saying nothing, me and God have entered the path. So I won't say yes. Mm. So that was the stage I was in when he came along and then I started seeing some things in him, things like him not having but still caring to give people, you know, him asking about, like my grades changed when I met him. Not like I was doing, like, but when I met him, he was interested in, like, are you reading? Like, it wasn't just, oh, let's move around, let's move around. I used to sit in cold room. See, I slammed the door cold room because I had never been to cold room before. I didn't know the door was like that. (laughs) I had never ever been to cold room. So he would make me sit down and read and, you know, he would set questions for me. And, you know, this was someone that was truly caring. It wasn't just like, oh, like the other person that would just sit down and talk and gist and play. Gist is good, but that wasn't like the core of what life was about. So the values that God had told me about, I I started seeing, and I was very Mm -hmm. real. I was very, like, I asked a lot of questions. Mm -hmm. I, now we play and gist in marriage. Like, it wasn't just, it was like contract. Like, okay, what do you think about this? Yeah, it was a serious What do you think about this? Serious hot seat. <laughs> Did you feel like you were being interrogated? Well, I Did think, you, what, what happened? Was it put off in any way? Because I knew this is it. Yeah. Um. Like, 
it was easier. So the tests looked so hard at that side, but at my side it was just like a walk in the park because God had prepared me. Even when her mom started asking questions, she <laughs> sat me down. Uh, they drilled me actually, that's the word. I mean, it was. Easy. <laughs> so, he didn't think I would tell my mom early. Why yeah. my mom? I mean, he got me a gift. I think maybe second month when we started talking about very early, he got me a wristwatch. And <laughs> like, I just went straight to my mom. And I had to say my name was wristwatch on <laughs> <laughs> And I told my mom, I told my mom because I wasn't interested in games from, you know, that's why I wanted to give the background of I wasn't interested in marriage. I was like, nah. So, I was interested in playing games or I was serious. So I told my mom, oh, there's this person who gave me a list. So my mom called him and said, thank you for the list. He was like, no, that's not what's wrong. Well, another attraction for me. Mm. Like, I'm, an average young lady out there wouldn't call her mom and tell her mom, Oh, a young man got me a wristwatch. Like, that was the last thing. So for you, it, it seemed so like... That was just like another that, attraction for me. That and she really appreciated that yeah. she was appreciated. So I was just supposed to watch. This is strong value. You are mm. not... You have a very good relationship with your mom for you to be to tell her. And then you're not playing games. Yeah. You are being real. You are clear. And then even the first time I came, she had told me about the other person that was asking her. So, so she was real. There was no game, mm. no gimmicks. Mm. I liked that, actually, because... Those are values that are very, very scarce these uh -huh. days. And she was able to exhibit that. So uh -huh. It was very real. There was no wish she washing shady deal kind of uh -huh. stuff. So the first time I prayed about him, it was clear. So I now resorted to, okay, let me just imagine that God did not say anything. And then I started now checking other things, like asking a lot of questions. Yeah. I, 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 I did a lot of sitting down and I questioned a lot of things. I'm like, okay, maybe... Even though I was sure I could hear God, I was sure that it was God. The speed that God answered was, I was like, this is somehow. So I said, you know, yeah, God, and, too good. and he was too good. he was silent yes, throughout with the other silent person. Silent throughout, and then now he's talking. And so I, 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 you know, asked a lot of questions, and then I also realized that as hard as I was, it was very easy to talk to. Like he, he was friends. Quickly became my best friend. Oh. Like quickly and then it was it was i was interested in his life in his career in him doing well he was in, he was he was he was he was okay telling me things that that no, i couldn't tell my best friend exactly. mm. i couldn't tell people my best of friends you not know, know one tenth of the things i started telling her mm. and then another thing that even made it very interesting is the fact that as young as she was she could handle that mm. she was like, mature that, so yeah. that maturity, maturity was between two okay. so there's something that she said that struck me and it was the fact that even though she knew that in place of prayer, you know, God said this was the guy, she pretended or behaved as though, okay, even if God didn't say, let me do my due diligence, uh -huh. you know, I started uh -huh. asking questions. And I think that's something that is really important. Um, we may not have the time to really, you know, look at this. God said, mm -hmm. then what do you yeah, say? Yeah, we'll say something about Yeah, that. conundrum and all yeah. of that. But something that God taught me about this concept. So okay. I, I like to say it everywhere because I think everybody needs to understand this because people have relied so much. Not like we shouldn't rely on God said, but people have put all the, all the responsibility. Put all the responsibility on God. And the analogy was like, you know how you give your life to Christ, like a, a smoker comes to church and gives his life to Christ, like, like he walks into church and then he hears a message and he gives his life to Christ. In that instant, his spirit is saved. But his soul and his body they aren't saved yet. He would walk out of the church, spirit saved, and still have the urge to smoke. Mm -hmm. And still have the urge to do the things he used to do. And that's why the pastor will say, okay, make sure you join the Bible believing church. Yeah. And then you hear the word of God. And then after some time of hearing the word of God, he would realize that, oh, the urge is reducing. And then eventually the urge goes away. Mm -hmm. And he now has the urge to do things of God. Mm -hmm. And then God told me that that is exactly how it is when his children have the upper knowledge or have the added advantage of, mm -hmm. of yeah, God yeah. saying, this yeah, person, this person. Okay. So if God comes down and says, oh, 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 oh that means your husband, that means oh, is your wife, that is just your spirit being saved. There are still things yeah, that, that you have to do. There are things you have to, soul level, you have to hear, you have to do to make your soul and your body saved. So when he explained that to me, I'm like, okay, God said, okay, let's imagine. So that's, that's the analogy. Well, you know, I, I didn't even tell her God said. Yeah, he didn't say I, I never it. was it. We're already in the relationship before he started telling me all these things. If he had said that, maybe it's not. <laughs> so, so I, I didn't say that. And that's part of what we're talking about, wisdom. So we've said a lot of spooky stuff here, like, oh, God led, God said. 
Um, but we also teach something that it has even formed a very, very strong foundation for our marriage counseling these days to say there are two sides to it. There's um, the God said part and there's the wisdom part, right? And the wisdom part is purpose test yeah. and then the wisdom test itself, okay. which is um, even if God had told you that this person is your spouse, wisdom test demands that you due diligence yeah. you mentioned, you like ask questions. Yeah. Be clear um, mm-hmm. as, it, as it is in the heaven, so it is on earth. Mm-hmm. If it is in heaven and it's not so on earth, something is wrong. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So you have to balance it. So if God had told you this is your wife, you have to do that due diligence. So God is telling me this person is my wife. I know the things God had told, him, told me about my wife in the past. It was just identity that was mm-hmm. not fitting in yet. Mm-hmm. So it was easier for me to ask around. And everything I was asking around was matching God. things God said. So it was easy for me to identify that, okay, yeah, God has said this person is my wife. Everything God has told me, to which, which not demand that I confirm mm. and do my diligence without saying God said to her. Yeah. So when we sat down and started talking, it was a very simple thing. We're going on a journey. I want you to go with me on this mm-hmm. journey. Um, it's a purpose journey. And I told her everything God told me about my life and mm. all that. In fact, as I time I was posting, I got to one day under a loot tree staff at, school. at staff school. It was too spooky that night because there were certain things that I was saying verbatim that God had told her. Amazing. About my life. Amazing. About her life, everything in details. In fact, there was one clear one. It's not like he was telling was me about my life. Was telling no. me what God had told me about, about, about my life, about my wife, about what my wife is going to be and all that. And everything that God has been saying exactly. She had written it in the diary. I had written mine. So the next day, I brought my diary, she brought hers. And this is something that is big there, so it's not like you want to write it sharp sharp. It wasn't a spooky stuff, it was clear what God has been speaking to this person. So it was like, she almost ran away that night. She was too spooky for her, she couldn't believe it. Coming from my background, yeah, she was like, ah, maybe it's sense to get This is definitely going to be true, that kind of stuff. So we believe strongly that there's a good side of things, and there's a wisdom side of things, purpose side of things. Your spouse should complement you in purpose, mm-hmm. complement you in every other aspect of your mm-hmm. life, character-wise, wisdom-wise. Mm-hmm. So we have to do that test proper. So we sat down, we, in fact, there are some questions we give people with counsel today that we actually sat down to look at those questions with ourselves. Mm-hmm. Over 300 questions, actually. Yeah, we sat down different aspects of life. <laughs> there is health, <laughs> there is family, there is finance, there is relationship with friends, there is... 300 um, questions. Yeah, MCQ. and we answered everything. In fact, I was so and then when we were, when we were cutting. Even though we are already married 10 years, but we can still ask those questions. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we would like to share. Like, I mean, I can remember there was, there was, there was then when our slogan was, let's be strategic. Um. We know that this thing is looking so good to be true. But we're not going to buckle it. You didn't get carried away so by. We didn't get carried away by. Yeah. yeah. We, we were just, together three years before we got married. Yeah, we got together three years. We, and we went out like twice. Only twice. We didn't go we out like that. We were always in that blue, sitting and down, talking. So it's like some serious foundational work yeah. we're going on. Does that remind you of what, oh, yeah. <laughs> what dating? Oh, yes, it does. And, yeah. and when you said that, she wasn't about the. Like when you sit down, yeah, and when you sit down, she's asking you questions, she's interrogating. I love that part about it because I find that a lot of women can tend to be very emotional and they turn marriage into an emotional decision. But marriage is a business relationship, it is two families coming together to start a new business entity exactly. and so you want to know our core values are like that our visions are like our missions are like so you're my kind of girl like yeah so we're doing strategy advanced strategy yeah so it's actually and god actually taught me that there are things that you learn in business yeah like yeah, yeah. Marriage it is. Mm. It so is. Can you say that again? Can you say that again? Can you say that again? That's <laughs> that's, that's beautiful. You've learned in business yeah. that I've taught you in business yeah. that you have to bring to marriage because yeah. marriage is my business. Because marriage is my business. Marriage.